Welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. Today, I'd like to introduce you to my new guest, Tom Sherman, who discovered the new calendar, which divides time into its natural, organic units for the first time in the history of time. Not only did his scientists discover the fifth season of the year, but they also developed and implemented new units of time for users to better plan, track, and divide their months. The new calendar is a reinvention of the calendar based on the 2017 discovery of the fifth season of the year. The new calendar is a new way to organize your time. It's a new way to think about time, your life, the world, and the universe. The new calendar has been under development by a team of American scientists for over the past decade. All of the links can be accessed through the description box below this video. Please do like, leave us a comment, subscribe, and share this podcast with your friends. Tom, welcome to the Quantum Guide Show. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me, Karen. I'm fantastic. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I, I avoid I avoid I avoid the herd. So it helps a lot when I do my own thing and I take good care of me and 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 um makes my life a lot better. Um I thought I know you've got a presentation for us. Really excited to get into that. But before we get started, Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit on how the heck you started in all of this? How did you discover the fifth season? How did this all sort of unfold for you? Yeah, I appreciate the uh, appreciate the 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 question. The answer, I don't, you know, it's so tough. It, it depends how how far back, how deep into the onion do you do we want to go? You know, it's so it's um, I um the 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 shortest sort of version is back in uh back in college. I was I was studying to be a finance major. I was actually I what I that's what I graduated with a finance degree and it coincided with the sort of like the great recession. And, uh, I remember one time I was, I was in class and our professor walked in and he was like, well, interest rates are negative and they really shouldn't ever be in theory, but like, and that's what we're learning in the book right now, but like, we're going to learn it anyways. Cause like, it's all fine. Everything's going to be fine. And <laughs> you know, it just kind of, it seemed like a very weird, it, I was like, obviously the book is wrong because, you know, what shouldn't be happening in reality is, and we're just going to sit here and learn it and pretend like everything's fine. And it's, so I, I decided at some point, I didn't really want to go down that path of going into wall street and finance and that sort of thing. So I was at a crossroads and uh, one of the things I wanted to do was become an inventor. You know, those are always, always seemed like cool people, you know, Doc Brown, you know, so I don't know, making time travel, something like that. And uh, so I decided to uh, start keeping a notebook on all my sort of thoughts and ideas and different projects, um, all that sort of good stuff. And time was just one of those subjects that I always researched i always wanted to keep keep tabs on because you know time is like this mysterious sort of substance that nobody really knows what it is or if you ask 100 people you know what is time you'll get 100 different answers and so you you never you know but then it runs our lives you know what i mean it, it runs everything everything we do and yet we don't know what it is and we follow this this thing that that doesn't divide well evenly and it's it's made out of all these different haphazard units so you can't really ever schedule anything coherently and but like nobody even knows when you know when it was made or what it's created or who 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 built it and so anyways uh yeah it was just one of those things that i kept and researched um and so so basically over the next course of the years um I'd come to a couple truths about time and, and, and that sort of thing. But I, I had all, all sorts of other stuff going on. And uh, then I missed a bill payment in 2017 and I had a dispute with the bank, whether or not um, <laughs> I had a dispute with the bank, whether or not Saturday was a weekday. 
And because they said it was a business day, they were open on Saturdays. I said it wasn't, and it's a weekend. And so uh, they said they were right. And then I overdrafted my account because of it, because I you know, missed the bill payment. And so I, I was furious. It was the last straw. I couldn't handle the Gregorian calendar anymore. So I went home, took the calendar off the wall of my kitchen and started labeling from one to 73 the 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 fr starting on the winter solstice and so um i come to the conclusion a couple years earlier that like five and 73 and we'll talk about this a little bit more um five and 73 are the only two you, those are the only two jump numbers you can use to divide the year up evenly and so but you just didn't know what to do with it they're they're just tough numbers to work with so I decided to start labeling from one to 73, starting on the winter solstice and um, December 21st until March 3rd. And so I was like, okay, yeah, that's kind of near spring. And, and that makes sense. And then March 4th, uh, the, the next period started and it went until May 15th. And I said, yeah, okay. You know, that's kind of near the Memorial day, sort of traditional pools open in that sort of thing. And then, um, the next part, the middle period, the middle day of the middle period of the year, then landed on the summer solstice. And that's kind of when it all clicked that, you know, this 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 journey that we're on every year around the sun is makes perfect sense. And it actually falls into alignment very well if we sort of step back and let it versus imposing our will on it. And so that was the that was the huge eureka moment. It all clicked in. And, and from there, you know, summer went from May 16th to July 27th, autumn was the, the newly discovered season of the year was July 28th until October 8th. And that made a lot of sense where it's the late season crops are coming in the sweet yeah. corn, the watermelon, the apples are, are ripe on the trees and uh, we're getting hurricanes instead of nor'easters. It's kind of like an inverse of spring. Um, second round of pollination, the migrations are reversing from, from where they started in the winter and all that sort of good stuff. So, and then the final period went from October 9th until December 20th and, um, it's fall leaves turn Brown fall on the ground. That, yeah. that sort of, you know, classic end of year, the cold wind starts blowing in from Canada and, and we get all these dark and stormy nights and it's spooky and you hear the owls in the forest more. And, you know, it's uh, it's just one of those things that so then after that, I was just living in my own little world where all I was doing was telling people that there were five seasons, five seasons in the year and they needed to know about it. I, I, I printed out a little spreadsheet of of the first calendar that I carried in my pocket and like showed people and everyone was like, OK, man, but it was. I mean, it's, it's just an undeniable fact. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of, that was, that was a, a big turning point in going from, you know, just having a bunch of ideas, keeping things down, doing a bunch of research and, and, and it just being one of many sort of side projects and interests into where I've been spending a lot of time, energy, effort, and going full bore into, um, really more into the research of it, into applications of it, into, um, you know, bringing it out to the public and, and, and product design and development. And I don't know, it's endless. It's, 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 uh, it's yeah, a lot it of just, fun and it's crazy, but so yeah, just, that's my short answer. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, so yeah, it spills over into everything. Uh, the first time I saw you, um, now I can't remember because I you've been on a few different uh um podcasts. Um I'm trying to remember who oh was it Brandon Thomas? You were on Brandon yes, Thomas's yes. Yeah, Brandon expanded Thomas reality. I think reality. that's where I saw you. And I was just so blown away. I shared that podcast with everybody I knew. And my son, he said, Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I knew that. He's been calling <laughs> BS on the seasons, especially the autumn and the fall for a long time you know it's mm -hmm. like it's too long it's too long it doesn't fit with the other so-called seasons mm -hmm. and you know I also have always done a lot of research I believe we're living in a construct that's been constructed to keep us from coming into our full power 
And so after I saw your information, I went, well, of course, that's another way that we're kept where our, our natural rhythms are thrown off yet again. Totally. You know, so, yes. um, yeah, so I'm really excited you're here. I want to turn the floor over to you. I understand you're going to screen share. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll interrupt you if I have any questions or whatever. But otherwise, yeah, just go for it. It's it's so brilliant, Tom. I, I don't it's so brilliant. It really <laughs> blows my mind and I can't wait for the whole world to switch over because it's going to make everything it. so much easier. It's true. And, and, and it, it's exactly what you were saying about our frequencies, our natural frequencies and getting thrown out of alignment and distorted because, you know, it's, it, that's exactly what it is. Every day, you know, turns into a week and every week turns into a month. But then if, if we can't, um, you know, work, work with each other or, or work within that as a, as a framework, it, it all gets thrown off. And so, yeah, let me share yeah. my screen real quick and this yeah. will. Hi guys, break time for a short message. YouTube will not monetize me. So if you enjoy my content and want to support my efforts, help me to cover my expenses by visiting my shop to buy yourself a beautiful organ generator. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand, and they are ethically sourced, handmade, and double charged for maximum effect. They are only available through my website, www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. Many people are finding comfort with Zendome's organ generators, commonly called Organite. They are a simple compound which balance ambient energy by converting negative energy and EMF into positive healing energy with many easily confirmed health benefits. They are a simple compound with alchemic and energetic properties. These devices function as self-driven, continuously operating, highly efficient, negative to positive energy transmutation factories. They help diminish the harmful effects of electromagnetic frequency radiation by attracting and converting negative energies, retuning them into new and more healthful sound and light wave patterns. And they help to purify the atmosphere and accelerate plant growth. They also help stimulate positive mood and are a natural remedy for poor sleep patterns. When Organite is within range of any corded or wireless electronic device, it will efficiently and continuously transform that energy into Orgon as it is being transmitted. This essentially creates Orgon energy transmitters out of any and all emitters of harmful negative energy. You can use these devices for focusing the mind, healing, meditation, and for spiritual growth. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand of organ generators, and they are only available through my website. Don't be fooled by imitations. Check out my website to see my latest selection at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N healthcoach.com. Check them out today. Now, let's get back to the show. So here we go is, is, um, ice is 32 degrees and a foot is 12 inches and a pound is 16 ounces, but how long is a month, right? Nobody knows, nobody knows in, and it's, it's 28 days, it's 30 days, it's 31 days. Um, it's madness is, is really what it is. And so that's kind of just when, when people often ask like, well, how, what's wrong with the current calendar we use it's it's that exactly what you're saying it's this death by a thousand cuts where you know sometimes four weeks does equal a month but most of the times four weeks doesn't you know is it's 4.2 weeks or 4.4 weeks equals a month but we round down and say hey you know if if we're trying to say how long is a month in week terms you know i don't know <laughs> it's 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 uh it's unreal um so Okay, here we go. Sorry. So, so basically what I tried to do is step back from the current system and a lot of the different proposals 
that are out there on how to change the calendar that have been developed. The calendar is the only um, it's the only system that measurement system that's been developed prior to the scientific revolution for the most part. Like the metric system was developed during the French Revolution. Um, Celsius and Fahrenheit were also developed uh, around those times where people were 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 taking science into their own hands and and ripping away the powers of measurement from the rulers, right? Which is why a ruler is a measurement stick, but it's also, you know, the king who sits on the throne. So whoever's in charge tells you can say, hey, yeah, that's not that's not 12 inches. That's 13 inches. And you have to agree. So so people took it back and, and they started creating these measurement systems for themselves. But um, the calendar was always kind of untouched. And the last time it was really updated was in the um, 1500s by Pope Gregory. And he actually really just did minor changes to the calendar. He didn't do, he, he updated leap day, uh, very insignificant, very significantly, but insignificantly in the grand scheme of things. Um, so anyways, I, I, I decided I'm not going to accept the premise and we're just going to start with the fact that there's 365 days in a year. And, um, and like, you know, leap day, you know, is a necessary thing. So yes, there are 365 and a quarter days per year. Um, but then, you know, three fourths of the year, three fourths of the years that we observe have 365 days. So look, we'll, we'll round up just for simplicity's sake. There's 365 days in the year. All right. Um, and so there's only two base factors of 365, um, five and 73. That's it. So all the other numbers that people have tried to use to divide our year up into even units don't work, right? We can't divide it by seven. We can't divide it by 12. Can't divide it by 10. But we, we, we really want to. All those numbers are, are much cleaner. They're m ni nicer to work with. Um, five and 73 are both prime. So, you know, it's really hard to intuitively divide something further between those two units so it's easy to discount and um back when i had like when i was telling you i was in the kitchen i i took the calendar down um that was i'd already come up with five and 73 as the base factors like i'd already but it just didn't make sense and it was way easier to say well i'd, I'd rather do 10 you know i'd rather do 12 i'd rather do an even number that i can so so i'd kind of i'd kind of disregarded it um so anyways so yeah like i was saying 365 you can't divide it by four that's 91 and a quarter uh can't divide it by seven that's 52.14 something something three uh you can't divide it by 12 that's 30 uh point four one days in a in a 12 day month the only way you can divide 365 evenly is by five and 73 um, so that's what I did. I, I, I decided to start on the winter solstice and the first 73 day period went from, uh, December 21st until March 3rd. And so that's winter where, uh, it's cold, it's snowy. Um, we have, we get snow geese around here in Delaware that are, that are migrating through, um, then spring March 4th until May 15th the exact middle day of the middle period of the year landed on the summer solstice. Um, and then autumn, the, uh, July 27th until, or July 28th until October 8th. Um, and then fall. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of, I kind of got all riled up and I, I told the Eureka story earlier. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to. Oh, it's all good. It's all I good. It's all to, good. Yeah. Just go for it. I'm, awesome. I'm thrilled. So, so yeah, so, um, so, and, and so I, uh, I, this is actually cool because I got a buddy of mine, David Luna, who's a talented artist to help me with this, this drawing. And that's one of the things where, you know, I was telling, I, I said earlier, I had this little, uh, uh, spreadsheet that I'd made that I was pulling out of my pocket. And then after that, the next version is something I like to call the manifesto version, which is I designed something on, on, uh, on word and I hand drew pictures and I'm very bad. <laughs> my, my drawing is not great. It's pretty rough. And so then 
I was I gave those printed those up and gave them to people uh, for New New Year's one year, and and uh, and someone was like, you know, you need better, you need, you need a little better art. So I got a buddy of mine, David Luna, who's a super talented dude, to help me out, and he drew this. It's an apple tree. All right, so it's that's I think the easiest way to think about the the five seasons throughout the year is it's cold, it's snowy, there's no leaves on the tree, it's winter time, right? And then spring the thaw happens the trees bud um the first spring because i i made this discovery sometime in winter it was like january 17th ish or something like that and the first spring i went out on march 4th and i was like when you know what i mean what what's going on here what am i looking at and it wasn't flowering like it is you know that's a sort of mid-spring action but you see the nubs, you know what I mean? The, the little nubs, the new growths, they're there. And it's just kind of, that's when I was, I was like, wow, I'm in my whole little world right now. I'm in spring 20, 12 days or whatever before, uh, before anybody else. Um, summer, everything gets leafed out. It's just green. It's full. The vegetation is, is complete. And, and, and also it's, it's trying to absorb so much sun nothing is really expanding energy on flowering, right? Like, it's just not, it's, it's not worth it to, to the plants. It's more just like get as much as possible. And so when you look around, that's normally what you see is, is just like full green. And then, and then autumn comes back and that's, again, it's people call it hay fever instead of pollen. Um, you know, you, you just get this second round of pollination. Um, the, 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 the trees the are fully fruited the late season crops coming in um and then in fall leaves turn brown fall on the ground and you kind of enter back into that 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 dark sort of wintry period and start the cycle all over again and so um the the thing about this is what i just described and what i just showed you in those slides is a very mid atlantic view of fall at least for me i don't know where you are but like that's that's where where i grew up is has been in the mid-atlantic region and so you know people are like well i don't experience that because i live in you know the desert or i live in uh florida oh, or i you know yeah we we sure do i'm in alberta canada uh-huh and um and it, absolutely and apple season yeah like that's mm -hmm. That's the harvest. That's when I'm out harvesting, all, harvesting not just the apples, but also all my medicinal herbs and getting them all ready. Mm -hmm. And that happens quite clearly before the sort of death and destruction phase of fall, where the leaves actually start to die and fall. So right. um, although it's cold, um, you know, obviously longer than it's super hot in the summer, but yeah, no, it's right on. It's right on. And so I'm quite a bit further north than you. Um, mm -hmm. So for sure. Perfect. Yeah. And, and that and that and that does track because that's, you know, that's the thing about it is, is it's just sort of dividing the sunlight that comes into Earth on a different in a different perspective than than how we currently divide that that same. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not creating anything. I'm not creating a different sun or, or or system that we're in or anything like that i'm just reshaping how how we view it and like you say that's that's why these 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 time periods match up and um and then my challenge to people down and and normally that's that's also true where people further northern and in latitude um let me see how far here we get perfect oh my god it's like i set this up i, <laughs> I uh, so here we go uh, um, so this this chart shows how we view the seasons right now. Top scientists in in the in America they're looking at meteorology meteorolog meteorolog meteorological seasons, um, meteorological seasons, and so this is what it looks like. You got four seasons: winter, spring, summer, and fall. Since it's impossible to start the Gregorian calendar at different periods of time. You can only start it on January 1st. They view spring or uh, let's see. Yeah. They 
don't use spring to start on March 21st. Spring starts on March 1st. Okay. So summer starts on June 1st, fall starts on September 1st, winter starts on December 1st. That's just how the scientists do it because the, the, the system they're using is, is so flawed and broken. That's all they can use to, to, you know, it's only good at viewing itself basically. So, um, so, and then, and then on the other side of the, the graph here towards the end is it, exemplifies the other point where winter is the shortest season of the year. There's only 90 days in winter as we're looking at it now. There's 92 days in summer and in spring, and then fall has 91 days. So if we're trying to divide something into even units to measure it in a coherent manner, we're just really falling short of that, of that sort of standard. Um, and then meanwhile, so this is the same same sunlight, same, same thing, same area, which is D Washington, DC. Uh, it's just viewed differently and divided into fifths instead of fourths so that we can have even units. As we see, every unit is 73 days long. And then it, it's, it's, a, it's this system since it's a, uh, you know, it divide, it's, it's a system that you can deploy at any moment in time. I can deploy it on the winter solstice and, and divide a year out to begin there. You know, if, if we wanted to start a year on January 1st with the new calendar and divide time into even fifths, you could do that too, you know, but, but, and that's why it's a better, that's why it's a better thing than, than the one that we're currently using, which is only capable unless somehow you decide, well, okay, I'll start at this point of time. Then I'm going to measure out 31 days and then I'll measure out 28 days but it's impossible to sort of do because then, it, you know, 31 days from January 15th, who knows? I don't know. You got to do a lot of math. It's just too taxing on the brain and, and the system should be there to help us, not, not hinder us and make us think and, and worry and, and figure out what's going on. So anyways, um, this, this pattern that, that I'm showing you on the screen of the five seasons of sunlight, um, basically when, we get further north in latitude, it gets more extreme. So um, the hours of sunlight is on the left-hand side here. In DC, it's basically nine hours of sunlight is the, the lowest amount of sunlight you'll get in a day. And then the peak is around 15 hours of sunlight at the summer solstice. But then for, for you folks up in Canada, that can vary, you know, all the way. I think the, 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 I had Fairbanks, Alaska, I think on it, and it was like five hours to 20 hours or something like that before you hit the Arctic circle, where of course it, you know, does the 24 hours and of sunlight and 24 hours of darkness. Um, but so, so like you guys definitely experience the seasons in a, in a wider variety and in much more intensely and in a much uh, more condensed time, time of year, because, like the sunlight you experience from spring, early spring into mid spring, it goes, you know, that the hours you gain in sunlight is more than the entire hours that, you know, Florida gains in, in, in its year, you know? And, and so like, but also what I challenge to people down South and, and in other latitudes like Southern California and all that is you'll notice that, you know, things still have their natural progression and there are still the monarch butterflies that are migrating. Or if you look at this instead of an apple tree, you look at it like a grapefruit tree or a citrus fruit tree. Like, you know, you have to go through all of these stages and it's it's not really a um, it, it's there. The pattern is there. It, it's just a matter of of observing it. And, um, you know, yeah, I don't know. So. Let's see. Let's see what the next slide. <laughs> so, yeah, this just kind of is, is a comparison of a get, just to hammer home. I don't know. I mean, the one on the left is a fine graph, I guess. If I was a math teacher, I would not give. I, I don't know. I would pass the one on the right more than the one on the left. Oh, it just yeah. looks better into it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, yeah, it, it just it it's more. um the one on the on the left is sort of a little bit crazy making the one on the right just makes you feel more settled you know mm -hmm. on an energetic level makes you feel more settled it makes sense it's very symmetric Oops. it's definitely more beautiful 
And and what I love about it too is it kind of I feel like it shows me more important dates and times, right? Where so like on the one on the left here we have the the equinox, which is definitely an important date, right? And so mm -hmm. that's interesting. I don't really know what this is. I mean, it's where the sunlight of fall crosses winter, but I don't know what day that is. You know, we don't really know what those days are, but it seems like important times too. And, but then over here, like you, you have the same sort of, I don't know, like the mid season, mid autumn is mid winter is mid spring. You know what I mean? Like, so April 9th is mid spring and mid autumn is September 2nd. So like those days are, you can tell right there, they're, they're sort of like inverses of each other and mm -hmm. same sort of deal here with fall and winter is those uh, uh mid fall and mid winter are sort of, which is november 14th and january 26th there's sort of these inverses of each other there are these significant points in time that kind of get obscured by the by by how we currently look through things and then also i like this point too here is the first of fall the first of spring the 36th of autumn and the 36th of winter each all those four days all have the same amount of sunlight for 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 the most part so you have this like interesting time of the year where four seasons touch somehow and um you know i i i'm not claiming that i know what it all means and and have it all figured out i just think it's the coolest <laughs> like i just think it's the coolest thing ever and i'm trying to you know what i mean like i'm tr i'm trying to figure out what it all means and like same thing with this point where the start of autumn and the start of summer is the inverse of the end of summer and the, the end of spring. So, and, and that's, you know, when I'm walking the dog or, or outside in the garden or something like that, and, you know, it's uh, late autumn. So, or early autumn and it's like, uh, uh, you know, so it's like September ish or, or uh, August or September ish. And, you kind of get that whiff and you're like, Oh, like I smell fall in the air or I, I smell mm -hmm. winter. You know what I mean? Like it's it, whenever I get those now, I kind of think of this chart and I love, I love catching those, those moments on these four points where it's like, where, you know, I don't know, you have these memories of, of, of all these different times and places. And I don't know. It, who knows? It's, it, <laughs> You are editing. This. No, I'm just kidding. It's, I, uh, it's good. I'm, I'm just getting down the rabbit holes. That's all. The, I love um, it. I love it. The, uh, cause I, so recently I've been thinking about how memory, I don't know. The, I don't have the slides for this, so I'll, I'll have to talk about it more later or figure out a good presentation for it. But like time is frequencies because frequency is something over time, right? That's all mm -hmm. frequencies are. So there, and then you, you're able to have time over time, you know, months per year, days per month or whatever. And so no matter what time is intrinsically related to this, this frequency thing. And so, so, so that means time is frequency. I mean, you know, if it can't be extracted from it, that means it is it. And like frequencies can you know, it, the, the, the more you can establish resonance with frequencies, it'll amplify the magnitude of them. And, and so that's the same sort of thing with doing something every day or doing something every week or doing something every month or doing something every year, you're kind of hitting these, these, these pings that, that, that build and build and create, you know, just th the entire impact of, your life or, you know what I mean? It's, you know, the butterfly flapping its wings that creates the, the hurricane, you know, or whatever. But, um, but so then, you know, the hurricane that the, her the butterfly makes the next flap, it's probably making beautiful weather on the other side of the, the earth too. Right. So, but then memories are this crazy thing that it's a storage of all these other sound waves and frequencies and vibrations that we get, right. Whether it's light or sound or, you know, any, you know, any input that we're getting, we're then storing in our brain as a memory. Um, so then 
if time is what makes people, you know, whenever there's an anniversary that occurs or whenever I'm standing in the garden and I get a whiff of fall air and I think about, oh, I'm, I should be doing two a days with my high school football team. You know what I mean? Like, so, so, so all of a sudden I'm, I'm getting, I'm the, what, what the memory is, is a storage of all of that, that, that input and, and data yep. that gets unlocked at these, at these moments. So yeah, I don't know. They, it, it's, it's, there's, there's something about ha- being able to capture that time and make it work for you versus be fighting it all the time. And oh, so I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. And look at your charts, how they illustrate that with, I guess, on the right hand side, you've got the four seasons, the meteorological, I can't say that word either, meteorological <laughs> season. And on the left, you've got the five seasons. Look at the difference. Look at how beautifully laid out, symmetric. Like that's got to work in our favor along with our memories. I'm sorry, I don't mean to take away your presentation, but it's just uh, the visual is so striking. That's that's exactly it, because that's that's, you know, that's exactly how it works, where all of a sudden you look back and you say, well, okay, today, you know, last year when we did this, was it today? Well, no, it wasn't the 13th because it wasn't a Friday. It's, it was on the 14th because it, you know, and um, that's, that's, that's the power of being able to break down time into its natural divisions and, and taking what you're given and working with it instead of, instead of fighting it. And, and yeah, that's the, that's the, the, the beauty of, of these, these charts. And so this, this kind of goes into that uh, same, same vein where, if you take a look at the Gregorian calendar and its season and its month, and you run a statistical analysis on it, the you get things where it has a mean of 91.25 days in a season, 30.42 days in a month. The, you know, the, uh, the range is, it ranges three days in a month or two days in a season, three days in a month. That's 10%, right? That is not chump change. If you're going from, January to February, and you're trying to set out a monthly plan for yourself of I'm trying to budget myself this amount, or I'm trying to do this amount of, of work in this amount of time. And then all of a sudden you lose 10%. That's, that's insane. Um, There's a standard deviation, there's a variance, there's skew. But then if you do the, the same analysis, you know, on the new calendar that you, you get the same amount there's 73 days there's no decimal points there's no um variance there's no range there's no skew it allows you to you know set these sort of parameters down in order to um again just establish uh establish resonance and so you in- increase the magnitude of your actions that's the that that's the beauty of of harnessing frequency for you i mean that's you know talk to the, the musicians about it they they get it better you know they get it better than all of us yeah um and so well the new calendar is cleaner it's just that's how it strikes me it's clean mm-hmm. it's simple and it's clean it's clear yeah. you know the other one is crazy making and that goes back to what i said earlier where i believe that how things are set up in the construct which is basically how we're programmed from birth and intergenerationally it's to keep us um, knocked off our center, I guess, for lack of a better term, keeps us, um, takes away any advantage we have. And now you're bringing it back. It's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I, it's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, I, I don't want to be like, it's a huge conspiracy, but it kind of is, but it also kind of is, kinda is. Kinda is, you know what I mean? It it's crazy. Is. It's um, but yeah, if you look back what we're using that, and, and this is why it is, is because if you look at what we're using right now, the, the current technology, cutting edge calendar technology, updated minor changes in the 1500s and, and you can work your way back, but it, it's all been piecemeal built and added and tinkered on and, and all that since 
you know, uh, 3000 BC or something like that. Whenever Romulus and Ramus, they were raised by wolves. And then one of them said, Hey, let's make a calendar. And that's, that's, uh, that's apparently where the root is begins. Right. And they made a 304 day system. And so, so then it's, it's been in the hands of the rulers and the powerful ever since then. And, you know, some, cha- you know, at some point, it, the next reform was they added a couple months into the year and then a 13th month every like two or three years. Um, uh, the only real reform, like, the, it, so here's the crazy thing is this is the only reform that I've, I've ever really come across that I was like, wow, this was like, somebody was trying to, uh, to, to implement the calendar for, for the people. Um, and so it was in the Roman era, the Roman Republic, and uh, the calendar was released every month at the start of the month, which they called the calends. So they didn't have the seven day week. So there wasn't um, like this constant sort of revolving of, you know, today's Thursday, but next year it's 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 a Friday. So they didn't have to worry about that. It was a it was a set system that they had these months that you know, added 12 up and it was 365. So it, they would just release it once at the beginning of the month. Um, and the, what the priests, it was controlled by the priests of a, a certain temple. And what they was started doing was they realized that, you know, 30 days is a long time to track. So people lose track and you can say, no, it's not, you know, it's not the 30th. It's, it's still the 27th. You, you know, you lost track of time. So what they would do is in rulers who they enjoyed and who they liked, they extended months by a couple of days or a week or so before releasing the next month's calends. And then they would extend that one a couple of days. So then they would extend rulers' reigns by up to, you know, multiple weeks to months. And then they would do the exact opposite with people they didn't like. And they would shorten the days and say, oh, yeah, no, it's the 30th. Yeah, it must have been a fast month. You know, crazy. You know? Who, who would have thought? And and so all of a sudden, yeah, exactly. They're manipulating people's time in order to to benefit themselves. And so there was a guy named Gnaeus Flavius who implemented the Flavian reforms, which was, <clears throat> excuse me, which was, he said, no, we're releasing the calendar <laughs> like all at once. We interview, you get the whole year and and. And his his argument was for the regular regularity of commerce and and in the market. And, you know, what I mean, just having this amount of power and secrecy and potency over over time is just um, it. It's 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 bad. You know what I mean? I, I actually came across a sticky note recently that said something along the lines of um, centralized power is like the most dangerous type of power. Right. Like fully oh, yeah. centralized power. And there's nothing more centralized than time, especially right yeah. now, because, you know, who no one even knows who the authority, you know what I mean? Like if, if you want to change the calendar, who do you even go to? Like I've you know, you, you don't go through government. Government's a good place for it to you know, there are a lot of people that have taken calendar reforms to um, the government. How, you know, in the 50s, 40s and 50s, there were, there were a bunch, bu- bunch of movements um, in the U.S., and they all, you know, it's a good place to die. People end, like it, people tried to end daylight savings recently, yeah. but I don't think they're going to do it. I, I think it only passed through one chamber and not the other. And it's because they were like, well, which, which are we keeping? Are we keeping daylight savings or are we keeping standard time? And, you know, both have their pros and cons. And so then, you know, nobody agrees. It, and so then big time wins and keeps us off thrown off yeah. our, our on our balance. Uh, twice Absol- a year. Absolutely. It messes with your circadian rhythms that, mm-hmm. you know, people often forget that we are embedded into a greater system, the planet and even the stars and everything. We're all connected. Mm-hmm. And um, you can't just jolt us constantly through faulty calendars and daylight savings, stuff like that. It throws yep. us off our center. It takes away our power. It interrupts our sleep cycles, you know, yep. and it's crazy making. It so is. That's why I'm so glad that uh, you're presenting this information today. It's fascinating. And it makes such perfect sense. Now, if we could just get everyone on board, that would be great. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and, and 
that's the that's exactly it with the 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 daylight savings jolts you twice a year heart attacks increase right after day, daylight savings and and that sort of thing i was reading today um heart attacks increase during the holiday season right the uh, uh and there's parties you know dealing with family traveling you know got to do all this all, all these gift giving shopping all these expectations and so check this out. This is why I asked, asked you earlier how, how it was going, because um, this year or so, traditionally, the holiday season goes from Thanksgiving until Christmas and, and Gregorian New Year's, right? Um, Christmas and New Year's are anchored to dates. So December 25th and January 1st, those are always the same. Thanksgiving being the third Thursday of November moves every year okay so this year we celebrated on november 23rd next year thanksgiving gets celebrated on november 28th so people are going to lose six full days of of shopping of traveling of of getting to the part you know what i mean all those parties are going to be condensed and it, so like now all of a sudden all that stress where, you know, they said it's like 25% increase in heart attack, number of heart attacks and like 40% increase in like the number of deaths related to heart attacks. And the so all that stress that causes all that anyways is going to get even more compounded next year. And so it's and and that's what I always really disliked using a, a an old calendar is like I would f turn up the, the page and it's like getting hit in the face because if a new month starts in the middle of the of the week. You know, that's like starting a new day in the middle of an hour. And yeah. so, you, you know, it's yeah. it, it's just nonsense. And then it's like, oh, wow, it's the first of the month and I owe rent and paydays on Friday, but it's Wednesday. But, oh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, oh, well, it's just so it's death by a thousand cuts. And and it just yeah, it's kind of one of those things where, um, you know, when you get poked and prodded from so many different angles all the time of, of, you know, then some months they have five, you know, sometimes every now and then you have five Mondays in a month. So you can't even say, Hey, every other Monday we'll do this because then like that gets thrown off sometimes. And you're like, well, Oh, well, uh, it, like, ah, uh, and it's not even the same month that has it. like, it's, yeah. it's just, I don't know. It, it's one of those things that the, the, at some, you know, the calendar was created with the best interests of everything in mind of trying to keep track of the annual cycle. Right. And so mm -hmm. at some point we've been perfecting it and, and, and creating it, but then at some point people have realized that it's, it's better to, you know, um, uh, use it for their own interests and in, instead of, instead of your, anybody else's. And so that's what, that's what my favorite part about this whole project has been is um, just kind of like, trying to tear down, you know, I've always been a bit of a rebel and I've always been a bit of a, you know, like I like to poke the bear, but I want to stay safe and do it. And this seemed like actually one of the, you know, it, it, because I, thank God I live in America in the two thousands, because like this type of stuff, if, if, you know, the last time the calendar was updated, Galileo hadn't finished studying math and like, you know, went to war with the Catholic church over, over his research, you know? And so like, I, I'm not the first person I'm sure that's, that's thought about or, or figured out five seasons in the year type deal. But at the same time, like these sorts of thoughts were probably so taboo yeah. until, yeah. you know what I mean? We're in a time and day and age that, that I'm allowed to think it not, not, not just allowed to think it, but, but then say it and then not just say it, but continue to say it. And, you know what I mean? Get people to listen and, and, and have them say, yeah, that makes sense and encourage me. And, you know what I mean? Gain steam where this would have been, you know, I would have had, you know, if, if this was medieval Europe, we would be, we would not be talking to like this. <laughs> you, know, we would not. you know who probably did have this figured out was the Aboriginal groups like in Australia or, or even in North America. And so what happened to them? Of course, their systems got demolished with and then right. these these uh, Vatican inspired systems were re replaced them. And, um, you know, and people who are very close to the land and the seasons, they, they I mean, they may not have had it 
you know, recognized as, you know, 73 days apart or anything, but they definitely would have acknowledged the, the, the change in, in time in a much more organic model. And so what's happened, that's got stopped out all over the world, you know, and replaced right. with, with this crazy making system. Yeah. So, so um, um, how, sorry, how are I we doing keep... with the presentation? I don't want to rush you. We got, <laughs> we still got lots of time, but I, okay. I just, uh, I think sorry, we're... I just want to bring you back on track. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll, let me just check to see how, yeah, we're basically, we're basically towards the end of it. And, and so the, um, this is kind of, uh, you know, the, the week brought to you by geocentrism is this is how we currently view our, our calendar week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And that's because last time it was updated, like we were, like we were saying that that was before, you know, Galileo endorsed the Copernic Copernicus's system. And so the earth was the center and the first planet was the sun. And then it was the moon. Then it was Mars and, and Mercury and Jupiter and so on and so forth. So, um, so, you know, it, I, I came across this fact when I was researching, you know, I'd, I'd been building this calendar and I'd created the, you know, we had these 73 day periods that then break down into two 36 day months, which I really enjoy because then you have this one day right in the middle, which is a great midpoint for the season. It just kind of is a great day to step back and, you know, take a breath from the month before and prepare for the month ahead of, to finish mm -hmm. out the season. Um, and so these two 36 day months uh, I, I are now broken into nine day weeks. And I was trying to figure out what to name the days of the week. And uh, I was like, I don't know, should I do friends day? Should I do, you know, mail day, you know, like email day or messaging day or, and, and, and try, or should I name it after plants and animals or, you know, what do I do? And then when I, I started researching why, you know, why is Wednesday, Wednesday, it, it like, I, I had realized that they were named after the planets, I guess, but I didn't realize that the order of the week was based on the order of the classical solar system that, that we used to, to go by. And, you know, that was just one more of these things that just kind of clicked. And I was like, oh, wow. I, I mean, I can name the, the days of the week, Mercury day through Pluto day. And, and it, it's, it's amazing just for a few reasons. First, that there's nine planets. I mean, I grew up, sorry, before the turn of the century, I still think Pluto is a planet. Uh, <laughs> like we, we can talk about it. I don't know. I'm bringing it back. Um, but also like it's intuitive to people who use it. And it's the same thing with, with the autumn and fall split where I had this fourth season and it's like, what do I name it? Like, you know, do I make up a name and, and try to tell people that, or, you know, say it's, it's, it's Tom, Tom Sherman season, you know, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. It, it would be, it would, it's, it's the system's already out there. Like all that's like, and so the autumn fall split was just great because it it's that sort of natural intuition of knowing that, yeah, these long hot nights in August and September aren't the same as October and November, you know, the it's, it's still a little bit like the summer and it's not quite the fall it's autumn. And um, same with the days of the week where it was like Mercury to Pluto day, people can still fathom that of, you know, it's so, something that they know well. And, you know, and then when you're like, Hey, I mean, you know, why do you call it, why do you call it, you know, Wednesday? Like, it, and, and that's the, the craziest part about the system that we live in is, we're indoctrinated into it like immediately in, in grade school. Yeah. Um, first thing you learn, right. Is there's four seasons and there's, these are the days of the week and the months. And then it was like in third grade, I learned the little rhyme or, or some people count their knuckles of like how to remember yep. the, the days in the month. And, but then at some point, you know, and you learn the basics of everything else, right. You learn the basics of math and writing and art all that time. But then at some point, you stop learning about time, stop learning how to read a clock or calendar or any of that. You don't think about it anymore. It's just like, you've learned it. Like, don't, don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Why do you need to know anything else about it? Um, and you go and study all these other things more deeply and thoroughly. And so no one really knows what 
you know what I mean? No one even knows what we are using and what system we're in and, and why we're using it and, and how, how it, it's be how it should be used or how it could be used or, or overlay, you know, there's a whole field of all the scientists out there are interested in a second and in time under a second. So, so that's where all the research of time goes into these days. Um, but you know, from a second up to a day, it all makes sense, right? 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in a, in an hour, 60 hour or 24 hours in a day. And then after a year, compounds into a decade 10 decades is a century 10 centuries is a millennia but it's in between those two this measurement system just completely falls apart and that's also where you know <clears throat> i talked to a guy who he um he he's a research scientist and he submits products for use by the fda right you know, medical devices or whatever and so i love talking to scientists and asking them about time and saying you know how long how long is a month? You're conducting an experiment. How long is a month? What is it? And so he he said they use um, a 28 day, four weeks, 28 days is a month. Mm -hmm. But so but here's the, the flaw with that is if you do that, you actually get 13 yep. 28 day periods in a year. So now you're going to take a medical device and and say, tell somebody that, or a pill or something and say, oh yeah, you do this X amount of times a month, this amount of times a year. And then on a, on, on a period of time that adds a full month into the, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's a huge like disconnect between what people think they know and, and, and what is going on in reality. Right. Of, of, and, and so, um, and, and it creates, these minor problems that who knows that could that could be a serious problem if somebody takes too much medicine you know too many times or if if something is supposed to last a year but you know it go it only goes 12 months or it goes 13 months instead of 12 you know like it's it's a um it yeah so so that's that that, that that's sort of the the world we live in uh today is not the 19th of fall i'm sorry this is an old <laughs> older presentation but we are on the um, the last week of of fall, so we're actually down here. I'm so sorry. I should have updated the slides. Yikes! That's all good. Um, um. So, anyways, that's the uh, I I uh, we're we're in the last week of of fall, and I don't know. I just love I just love hitting the the early winter holidays and starting 2024. You know, we basically three days is one percent of the year. So you're basically four percent ahead of everybody. You've, you know, you 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 get to relax that first week while everybody's running around hectic and, you know, doing stuff in between Christmas and New Year's and and acting like maniacs. And then by the time they're all celebrating New Year's and talking about their resolutions, you say, "Yeah, I've been working out for the past twelve days. I don't know. I don't know what you've been doing." Like I've been yeah. eating, eating great. I, you know, I've been, um, so that's, uh, that's, in, that's interesting. You say that because I always kind of my pin in the end of my years, always, uh, the win the winter solstice, mm. you know, and from that point on that sort of the big day. And then the rest is, is just ordinary days, but the days are getting longer. Like I get, I'd celebrate that, that that's the shortest day of the year and here oh my goodness you know we have long 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 nights and short days in the winter time it's something to celebrate you know get out the candles and have a nice dinner and all that and uh and spend some time in contemplation and i pull myself right out of the of the rat race right out of you know whatever everybody else is doing it doesn't affect me at all it's fantastic so i've been doing that intuitively and it corresponds perfectly with what you're showing us. So with what you're showing us, this adds harmony and balance to our lives and takes mm -hmm. away from that crazy making, you it's, know? It's it's so true. And and so I live in Delaware and specifically near the beaches. We have a couple beaches. And so that's what, you know, that that's another reason why I think I've just been this. Yeah, I don't know. It's just amazing that I've been able to to sort of, figure this out in this place and time because 
it, it's a seasonal, it's such a seasonal area, not only with the farms, but also the beaches where, you know, the tourists come in the summer and in the wintertime at nobody's here and everybody's closing up shop. And, you know, only recently have, have really, you've been able to find a restaurant that's open year round or anything like that. And, you know, people are supposed to be like that you know people are animals right like like yeah. who, who do we think we who do we think we are that we're better than the system that that everybody else uses right all the other animals are out there living based off of the sunlight yeah and and using that as their guide and through the year and then we decide no 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 no, no, no. we know what's going on we're, we're dividing it up in this crazy fashion with all these different you know numbers that that don't really make sense and we're going to name them funny things and we're going to, and, and that's it. And that's how we're going to live. And, you know, it's, you know, I love to tell this to people all the time that, you know, the animal, the animals don't use the Gregorian calendar. Your house doesn't use the Gregorian calendar. The, the garden doesn't use the Gregorian calendar. It's out there and it's, it's using the calendar that we're trying to describe with the Gregorian calendar. And so if we can't, step outside of it and say, Hey, we live in 2023. We deserve the ability to think about what is time. What are we trying to do with the calendar? Why are, why do we use it and re-engineer it from the ground up in order to make as much sense as possible? Like then, then, you know what I mean? Then we deserve to be using a, a calendar that's 500 years old. That's the only technology, you know, a wheel, you know, has, has gone from a, a stone round stone disc until, you know, it's inflated with rubber and air and, you know, like, like there's no technology that we've sort of let fall by the wayside and just forget about yet use so consistently um, except yeah. for the calendar. And so. But that might be too, because it's to the advantage of the banking system. And that's pretty powerful in our, what I'm going to call again, the construct that we live in, you know, and yeah. and then you add statutory holidays, it gets even crazier, you know, and what's a banking day and what's not like even going full circle to, to how you started with, right. with your bill and how you started thinking about time. It's wow. crazy making and it's very controlling. And it's not natural. Yeah, I had not thought about that. And I love it because, yeah, the banks, that's exactly it. The banks and their bank time that they got me on <laughs> on the whole thing. And that's you know, and that's they get a lot of with, people on that. Right. And that's why time zones were created by the railroads. Right. So that they could keep on schedule. And then they destroyed, you know, everybody experiences noon at a different time every day, but they destroyed that. And so um, it's the same thing. And uh, the 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 other thing here's the interesting thing though about the banks and that's that's actually going to be part of the key is um, there's I, I said earlier how there were all these calendar reforms that you know they brought to Congress or they brought to the United Nations the League of Nations they all they all died it was just great place to go to die if you're a calendar reform is 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 to to politics like that. There is one calendar that the federal government observes besides the Gregorian calendar, and it's called the uh, 52, 53 week calendar or the retail calendar or the four, five, four calendar. And um, it's a uh, it was created in the 20s and 30s by businesses and and retailers because they were trying to measure their sales. But like we've discussed where January this year had five weekends and then January next year has four, all of a sudden your sales get thrown off because it looks like you've had a full extra day's worth of commerce. So to rectify that, they created their own calendar system that has 364 days in a year. So 52 weeks even, and then they just chop off that last day and start, you know, start, start the next year. Um, and then they add in a leap week, a entire 53rd week, every five or six years, depending on how many leap days have been observed since the last leap week that that calendar system has observed. Um, and so since so many businesses banded together and were using this accounting system style, it was 
able to be adopted by whoever the, you know, general, the glad generally accepted accounting principles and the IRS. So now that's the IRS accepts that accounting system um, if you're a business and that's the only sort of, and so uh, the, that's the key sort of in, in my mind is, is through, you know what I mean? Like, like, I don't want to say through the banking industry because that's not really how I want. <laughs> that's not really the goal, but, but it's through commerce and it's through, and it's the same thing with the Flavian reforms that I talked about earlier. That was in the interest of commerce. And that's in the interest of small businesses and individuals. And that's one of the people, you know, there's a lot of different interesting people who buy the calendar and, and they come into different subsets where, you know, it's like people who like to garden, people who, you know, are interested in, in, you know, their, their health, people who are interested in, um, like outdoors activities or camping or, you know, fishing, um, stuff like that. And then, uh, so, oh, shoot, I don't know. I got, I got, I got a little sidetracked talking about the different, um, people. That's, that, that's okay. I, I wanted to ask you too, before I forget, do you have any images of what your calendar looks like? Sure. Yeah. What it me... actually looks like, how the days are laid out and the months are laid out and all that. That'd be really cool that's to a, see. That's a good, good question. I, um, you know, people, because, you, people have, because they're available from your website, right? They are, they are available on the website. Um, uh, yeah, the new calendar.com. Uh, I you sell a one pack, a three pack and a five pack. And I'm, 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 I'm open to custom orders. I'm, I'm starting to do a couple of those, uh, for, for people, which has been pretty cool. So like if, uh, let me see, uh, Aye, aye, aye. Because um, I also really love the layout um, um, of of the actual calendar. I thought it'd be good for oh, folks oh, to actually, see here, that. This might be easier. I'm sorry. Let me. No, can it's I, all good. It's all good. I'll. Uh, so here is is this all right? Is this gonna would this work? Is that a? Or do um, it, is it yeah, better if I find just a, hold it up a little bit higher? Higher. Oh, oh, not that high. There we go. So, so, so does it always, does it always start on, on like a Monday? Yes, actually, all right, I'm sorry. I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, I will, share your screen. Um, or you could even, if you want, go to the website and show that too. And of course, okay. everybody, the links are going to be in the description. So please go check out Tom's website. It's very, very interesting. Um. There we are. Here we go. So yeah. So the, this is the new calendar. It's it's just a it's a novelty wall calendar. You know, it's it's uh it's full of a bunch of different stuff. Um, this is a this is a good good sort of picture of of the part of the layout is every year it's going to go through that apple tree throughout the years. You get daylight hours at three different latitudes. Um, Caribou, Minnesota. Washington, D.C., and Key West, Florida. Um, the reason I picked those three latitudes is because uh, they're the northernmost, sort of middlemost, and southernmost latitudes in the continental U.S. Uh, USA. So, and also, like, you know, I thought it would kind of be a little intuitive for people where Key West, Florida, you think that's south. D.C. is kind of in the middle. I don't know. I don't know. Caribou, that, you know, if caribou that's like a reindeer right so it has to make sense um mm -hmm. i did a average temperature chart on the other side and so that has the same three latitudes um and it's just interesting to be able to then wherever you are traveling throughout the the the, the country you'll be able to sort of gauge where that sunlight pattern is um throughout the year it also comes with a, you know, sort of classic activities and sort of tips and tricks, as well as any holidays that that are that are observed in that month. Um, it's a permanent calendar, so it lasts from 2019 to 9,999. Um, the free refunds in the year 10,000 if if your <laughs> calendar does not work, um, but it will work. That's the beauty of it is it's a set anchored system. 
So when you get to the end, when you get to the, the last day of fall, instead of throwing it out and buying a new one, you just flip back to winter and you go back through the same site because it's a cycle. It's a process. It repeats. And you can start building those sort of permanent habits. And what we, so this is what always killed me when I was growing up. I'm forgetful, right? And I'm bad at giving gifts. And my family always gives me, you know, hell about it because, you know, I'm, you know, it's, oh, Tom forgot your birthday again, you know, whatever. So every year I try to get a calendar and I say, oh, hey, when's whoever's birthday? And then I throw it out at the end of the year and I have to do it all over again. It doesn't, it's just so, <laughs> it's so maddening that, um, Th this is permanent. It lasts forever. You can set those routines. You can sort of like, you know, mark like that's that's what I did recently is we went through a year and it was just like, hey, whenever we clean out the fridge, let's just mark it on that calendar in ink, you know, even though it kind of ruins the calendar when you go back through it, maybe. But then when we go back through it, it's like, oh, OK, here's you know what I mean? Here's where we sort of had a good when we were cleaning the fridge every two weeks, like we were, you know, wasn't that better that we had, you know, or whatever, or, or, yeah. or once we fell out of that cadence, it became overwhelming and it can help you so sort of track those patterns and mark those, those actions in an anchored way. It's the same thing with the garden where like a lot of people do by the, the, the weekend, right. Or the, the first weekend of March or the third weekend in March, same yeah. thing that we talked about with Thanksgiving, where that can change by seven days. So then all of a sudden, the first weekend in March could be either the first or the seventh. Um, a lot of time can pass in that. A lot of daylight can change in seven days. So then all of a sudden, you know, what worked for you last year doesn't work for you this year. And you're sitting there scratching your head saying, I did, I did exactly what I did last year. And it's because... You did, but you didn't because it's it, it's just not it's just, it's just it's just off. It's just all you know a one percent when you miss one percent of one percent that that you know you get off by a, a thousand percent. And so, um, made in the USA. It was designed, engineered, manufactured in the in in America. So we're ditching that Italian time, that crazy Italian time that's that's been had had our clutches since you know romulus and ramus and the roman emperors and then the church and then and then we all forgot about it so um yeah that's but it seems that's, to me this would also be perfect for establishing routines like you know a lot of people go to the dentist twice a year um you know once a year they go for a physical uh mm -hmm. you know um maybe maybe uh in the spring at a certain point is the perfect time to clean out your garage you know like you said yep. clean out the fridge you can keep yep. you can keep it or your year organized and it'll always be like that every year so it becomes almost a cellular memory after a while because it's not being right. thrown off all the time by by right. the gregorian calendar Right. You're actually able to establish a, a set schedule that maintains from month to month, day to day, week to week, year to year, season to season. And er, er, earlier you asked me about, uh, does it start on a Monday? And I'm sorry, I, I kind of glossed over it. But yeah, that, that's the best part is every month always starts on the first day of the week and it always ends on the last day of the week. So, you know, like like every other measurement system where you get all the way through a unit and then you add that on to another one of those units and that creates a new unit you know you add a bunch of inches together to create a foot you add a bunch of feet together to create a yard or whatever i mean so that's that's the same principle that that we're trying to use here and that's why it's so important to 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 observe first the five seasons because that's the only way that we're able to create a coherent unit to break the year down. That is the only one that, that we can make. And then, then from there, like the, the 36 day month has a lot of advantages that I think are great because you can have four weeks because people already think that there's four weeks in a month. So that tracks, um, nine day week is close to a seven day week, but it's also divisible. So you can divide your time into three different periods of time. Um, and so this picture right here on the right, this is an inside ver uh, scoop of the, um, the user guide. So every calendar comes with a user guide 
and it goes through some of the history. It goes through the seasons and their units. Um, and so besides discovering the fifth season of the year, one of the cool things we did was we now have these nine day weeks, which can each break down into three, three day periods, which um, currently we're calling shifts. And um, that's just another one of those things where it's great to kind of set those cadence for those chores and tasks and things that, or, or not necessarily even regular things, but it's like, Hey, uh, like if I'm going to take a trip to go somewhere and see somebody overnight or whatever, I need three days, right? I need a day to need a day to plan a day to go there and a day to come back and and, and decompress or yeah. whatever. Like I need a day to, to do my laundry. I need a day to, wash it and and dry it. I need a day to fold it and I need a day to put it away. Like, you know, or, or however it takes to, to, to sort of take time and, and use it for yourself. So anyways, the, the user guide, yeah, it comes with um, stuff like the units, the history, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and then, and then that's, that's, that's sort of the recipe is, um, oh, and it comes with leap day built in. So Here's the thing about leap day, right? I personally don't think it should be observed where it is, but um, the reason people like to put it at the end of February is because February is the most obvious month that isn't like the all the other months. So people say, hey, put it in February. Mm -hmm. Although frustratingly, right, February is also the only month that is fully divisible by four seven-day weeks. So... <laughs> so you take the one month that actually works and once every four years you're like ah no it's all right well we'll just add this on and make it a little bit crazy extra crazy this year right mm -hmm. so um so i don't think it should be observed at, in late winter and i've done polls before on people right we've ran polls where um winter is people's least favorite season it's their least favorite one they like summer they like autumn um, those are people's most favorite seasons. So really we should, if we're adding an extra day anywhere in the year, it should be in it summer. To, it should be, we after want it to be a longer day, not a right. shorter day. Right. Yeah. You know, it's one that everybody enjoys or something, yeah. you know? So, um, but in order to just, uh, maintain this anchored system where every calendar is, it's fully compatible with the Gregorian calendar, because if you use dates and not days, so if you schedule with people by saying, hey, I'll do something on the 28th versus I'll do something next Tuesday, it's a lot easier to, uh, to, to, to maintain the rigidity that the new calendar offers. But mm -hmm. it comes with these, these compatible dates where the 37th of midwinter is always January 26th. And so you can sort of keep, you know, keep, your, keep your toes in reality where everybody else is or, or whatnot so that you don't, you know, I did for like three weeks. I tried to make people schedule on my, <laughs> on my time, on my calendar. And it was just a little too much. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta be flexible. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So anyways, leap day shouldn't be where it is, but we have to be there just to like, just to like keep a, um, I don't know. It's, it's just the easiest thing to do right now in order to maintain uh coherence with the Gregorian calendar. Yeah. And, and so it's one of those things that, mm, I don't know, it's on the five-year plan, the 10-year plan for once we get that tipping point of, um, of users, then we can uh, sort of change the, you know, we can vote, you know what I mean? Like, that's what we can do. We can say, hey, where do we want to do this? Um, or it's one of those things that everybody just gets a free day throughout the year. I also remembered what I was going to say earlier, which is about these users and and commerce and why adopting through business was was going to be such a, a, a huge thing. And that's because, you know, some of the people who are able to get the calendar right now and have converted is like a small farmer in Arkansas or like a software developer in New York who are small businesses, who are people that do control their own time and are able to step outside of the framework that most people are forced into. So mm -hmm. banding those sorts of people together of a small business network of people that are, are like-minded who are trying to, you know, create a system that, that, that makes sense and benefits themselves, their community and their world like that, that will be huge. And that will be the path forward of 
if if we got that tipping point of users in you know, had an accounting system that worked just as well or better than the one that is out there. And then, you know what I mean? That's, that's sort of the, the, the main shot just beyond grassroots global adoption, which I'm, I'm actually frankly stunned by already where, you know, it took Pope Gregory 200 years to get his calendar fully adopted by the world. And that's with the full weight and faith of the Catholic church behind him. Right. And so I was just a guy in Delaware you know, who people, all my friends know I'm, <laughs> they know I'm a crazy guy. They know I'm a weird guy. And so I'm just, I'm just the funny, weird guy at a party. Right. And so to, to be able to take that and then build this sort of momentum and create this, you know, d- do all sorts of serious research, create this product and then take it out. And um, after it went, it went viral this year, on the day I got fired from my software development job. So it was like perfect timing perfect. from the universe of just kind of like, Hey, lean into this and, um, and, and see where it goes. And, and so, yeah, I think, I think we could be the 200 years just on a grassroots decentralized movement. Um, so yeah, come join us. I don't know. They, uh, we have a discord server by the way, too, um, along with all this other stuff. So Discord, uh, that's kind of cool because it's it's starting to get people, like-minded people in there. And then we're talking about some of the traditions that we're starting or observe or, you know, observa- seasonal observations that, that, that occur. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's, 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 it's super exciting. And I'm sorry that I've, <laughs> I've just been rambling about time. No, it's all good. Talk about time forever. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So, um, yeah. So if you want to close the screen share and um, again, for those, um, Tom, some of the people will actually be listening to this on an audio. I know my green screen has gone nuts. I don't know why I tried to fix it, but (laughs) it has to do with the low, uh, the sun being so low this time of year and the way it shines in. So I have to probably move everything. But anyway, so I apologize for that. Um, But um, as I was saying, a lot of people are listening to this on the audio podcast. So please, those of you who are listening, please do come over and watch the video. It's available on YouTube and Odyssey and Telegram and Rumble and all over the place. Um, And of course, on Facebook. But um, for those that are listening, Tom, tell people um where then actually speak the the words of your website where they can find you um so that they may want to go directly to your website and check it out sure. yeah um if you go to the new calendar.com the new calendar.com um that's yeah you can you can check out the the site the shop um uh some media i need to update my media channel with some some other podcasts and stuff and and when yours comes out i'll get it on there too but i haven't updated it since i don't know the pandemic things went crazy i don't know if you know but oh yeah oh <laughs> um, yeah things went yeah crazy. we so we had gotten some media in, in 2019 and we were gearing up for a really big 2020 um but anyways so yeah you can check out some of that stuff or, or contact me my emails on there i love get, getting emails questions from people all that sort of stuff so, um, Great. yeah, thanks so much. Go to the new calendar.com and on social media, it's at the new calendar. Mm-hmm. And it will also be in the description below. And, um, Tom, I will send you the link to the YouTube version of this, uh, show that'll be out later today. Um, awesome. I'll email that to you. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the show because this is just fascinating. I love outside of the box thinkers and creators and there's there's just so many ways that we can organize reality different than the boring and mundane and i really appreciate all the work that you've done and thank you for introducing me and of course my viewers and listeners to the new calendar so everybody i guess that's it for the show today and um again tom thank you so much for joining us and we'll say goodbye and we'll see you next week everybody on the quantum guide show bye-bye Thank you for joining me for the Quantum Guide Show. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube and other channels at Karen Holton TV. 
Click the like button, leave me a comment, and share this podcast with your friends. Check out my website at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com to see my free resources and amazing products and services. All the links will be in the description below. As part of the Forbidden Knowledge Network, you will find the Quantum Guide Show with Karen Holton and also the Aliens and Angels podcast on all audio platforms. Until next time, keep up the good work.